Hi guys, it's Pete from MyJuryBench.com. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something different, about learning how to use Blender 3D and whether or not you think it's an easy program to use um, or not. I know some people have told me and sent me messages and emailed me that it's a very complicated program and I'm going to show you today why I don't think it's very complicated at all to use. So let's get started. Okay, so you know one thing that everybody tends to tell me is that Blender is a very complicated program to use. And I believe that Blender can be complicated if you want to make it complicated. Uh, uh, listen, I'm 55 years old. I, I started using this program about four years ago, maybe five years ago. I got real good at it in about 60 days, and that was working a couple hours a night um, after work and just playing with all its features. Um, I tend now to only use Blender for 3D modeling and 3D modeling specifically for 3D printing. Specifically because I'm in the jewelry business and I model things for jewelry, but I do dabble in some other things. Because I only use modeling, I'm going to tell you if you want to get good at modeling in Blender, then just focus on a few things. I'm going to come over to File, New, and then General, and I'm going to pull up my Start file. And this is typically how I start every session of Blender. Now, you can see I have what seems to be large text here, and there's two reasons I do that. I keep the large text or the large scale on because it's easier to read for me, but in addition to that, um, when I'm recording videos for you guys, it's easier for you to read it. Now, if you want to change the scale of your work environment, you can go to the Edit menu, come down to Preferences, and I'm going to show you here. This is pretty much a simple change. If I change that to 1, Notice your workspace. Notice all the text in boxes get a little smaller. Now, they're very legible. We could read them if we had a nice big screen. I do, I've got a 29 inch monitor, so working with a 29 inch monitor makes working at level one or a scale of one uh, very easy. But if I want it to be a little bit bigger, I can go to 1.4. And now you can see that your work environment, um, at least all your working boxes, your tabs, everything's a little bit larger, the text is a little larger, a little easier to read. So if you're working on a small laptop computer, you might want to think about adjusting that. That's a little tip that I'll give you. I'm going to change this down to uh, 1.2. I'm going to close up my preference tab. And now let's talk about a couple other things in the modeling area. So this big area here is our viewport. When working in your viewport, obviously you want as much space as you can. And depending on the things that you're working with, you may need things turned on or off to apply changes to your model. So, for instance, if I don't need to work with this tab here, which has all of these tools in it, I can come over in my viewport, press the N key, and turn that tab system off. And that eliminates that menu or that selection of functions from being seen so that I can work in a somewhat larger area. Just like that, I can do it over to the tools option. Now these tools were in modeling mode up here. So if I click on, let's say I click on this image of a diamond and I press tab, you can see I have all these tools that I can work with to make changes to my model. Now I tend to work with keyboard commands. I tend not to use these. Uh, to come over and click on them, but you can. So if I wanted to make a change to something, um, I tend to do it with a keyboard command. I'm just used to those keyboard commands. If you want to work with the icons here, I suggest um, in default, Blender has this set up here, so you see all the icons with no names. Move your cursor over until you get the double arrow and then drag it to the right, and then you'll get the names of each of these. It's a good idea to work that way because now you're looking at not just the icon, but the associated wording function of that icon. So for instance, insert or inset faces here. Um, I'll, over time, as I work with that, I'll know that that's what this function is for. And then when I turn off or I make this tools tab just a little bit smaller, we know that that's still insert faces. Now you can see, you can see by holding your mouse over there, it comes up and it says though this is a loop cut. So however you want to work, with it you can work with it but you can turn that on and off with the T key so T off T on 
I'm going to come back into object mode. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here just because we can. Now, also, when working with your objects, I have three objects on the screen here. Over in the upper right corner, you have this box here, which is kind of like your file explorer. And this is a file explorer for the objects in your 3D window. So for instance, I have one camera and one, two, three, four, five lights. One of those is a sun and the others are just like pin lights. I keep those in lights and cameras. You can name these whatever you want. And then in the ring collection, I have a six prong head, which is right there. I have the ring itself. And then I have the diamond right there and I keep those in a collection but if I add in another object or I get rid of these I can select them all and press X or I can come over here highlight my rings collection right click on it and come down to delete and that should that deletes the collection it doesn't delete the objects then I can select all of those hit delete and now everything's gone I have a clean slate you can undo that with the option or the control Z or command Z depending on if you're using a Mac or a PC so think of this area as your file explorer and every time you add in a new object, for instance if I add in a cube, shift A, mesh, cube, and I'm going to size that so we can see it in our 3D port. There's our cube and you can see here's the cube, it shows up here. Now you can move that to anything you want. If you don't want it in your collections, you can drag it down here and get it out of your collection. You can do whatever you want with it really. So. Um, you know, move it around, keep it in a collection. So this is basically your uh, file explorer for your objects. It's just a way to group things or put things what, what Blender labels as collections. It allows you to put things in certain collections. So I'm going to leave that just like that. Now with the cube selected, if I don't select anything, but let's just select the cube, you can see we have functions here that pertain to modeling of that particular object. Now I have the cube selected so when I'm dealing with this cube if I come over to a modifier I can add a modifier and I'll just add it in a subsurface uh, a, subdiv a subdivision surface and you can see it changes the physics or the, the, the way the item looks and then I can kind of make this do whatever I want and turn it into a sphere and then I can size this up a little bit larger so that we can see it. I'm just gonna go turn off x-ray mode so that we see that there. Now it's not a perfect sphere but it you know I, I applied that modifier and that applies to the cube only because that's all I had selected was the cube. Now here we have the particles property so if you were doing something more advanced other than modeling then you would use the the particles option. If you're all you're doing is modeling for 3D you're not going to use this don't worry about it. If you're not using something or you don't have to worry about it like all of these functions here you don't necessarily need to worry yourself with at first um, you could play around with them if you want to get familiar with them but they're not going to help you with modeling the add modifier or the modifier tab that you'll be working with occasionally uh, we're not going to work with particles uh, physics properties in modeling for 3d printing we don't work with physics properties we're not dealing with that there uh, let's see, object constraints, again, that's not going to be important to working with Blender for 3D modeling. Um, we don't have to worry about object constraints. Maybe if we get more advanced we'll deal with that, but for now you don't have to worry about it. Object data. Now this is something you may want to familiarize yourself with, but um, I'd say for the most part, the only time I really come into the object data is I will come into object data with the object selected. I will come down to the normals option in this tab and I will turn on auto smoothing just because I like everything to show as smooth. So remember that. And then here is our materials and materials really apply if you want to see a product that's going to be rendered. So for instance, let's get rid of this. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to select my ring and of now if we look at a ring you can see that it has a gold material to it and I use that for reference when I'm dealing with a customer I'll show them what the ring is going to look like with the material applied so if I delete the material here we'll select that I'm going to hit the negative key or the minus key right here and we'll delete that material so now this ring shank has no material assigned to it so it just looks kind of plain and modeled the way it is I can come down to the materials tab 
add in a new material. Now, if you remember, I think I walked you through a few videos ago on adding the PBR materials to this. If you haven't seen that, I'll try to stick a card up in the top here, but I'll add in a metal material and I'll come down to gold and you can see it adds in a nice gold material. And then you can play with these settings, like if I want it rough, you can see if I change the roughness, how it changes the model. I'll zoom in here a little bit so you can see that. So you can see it changes that model there. Um, a sheen tint, if I change that, it really doesn't have much of an effect here. Um, this setting here, IOR, is really for something more like water or smoke, so you don't really have to worry about that. The alpha setting, you can see that just turns it black, white, and uh, whatever our material is. Specular, it won't have much of an effect here. Metallic gives it a metallic look or a maybe a felt type look. So if you're working with metals, you usually keep the metallic at a level one. And that's really about the only thing I worry about in the materials. That being said, if that's all you focus on, then you can focus on other functions within Blender to do 3D modeling and not confuse yourself with all of the other things or the feature creep that often is associated with programs that do so much that we hardly ever use anything. And by feature creep, I mean that you're, you're sitting here modeling um, something like this and you start pressing buttons up here for layout, sculpting, you know, I'm not going to be sculpting this. I could come over here and start sculpting if I wanted to, but uh, I'm not. You know, you can see I can drag this around. I can click and drag things. If I wanted to flatten things out, I can come down here and kind of flatten things out a little bit, um, depending on how you have the settings, and it depends on your model. So I wouldn't really worry about all of these other features because you don't need them. Just focus on modeling for now. And then when you get to a certain point where you're comfortable with modeling, then you can move on to the next step. Let's say you want your renders to look better, then you can focus on rendering your objects to look more photorealistic. And that's a, that's a process for another step. I hope that gives you an idea of how to get started with Blender and start working with modeling, especially modeling for 3D, for 3D printers, because uh, that being said, don't get overwhelmed. I mean, this program does a lot more than most 3D modeling programs as just a 3D modeling piece of software. So that being said, you have all kinds of free add-ons that you could get in the future as you get more advanced and start working with more and more different types of 3D modeling that you don't get with other programs that you'll have to spend much more money on. Or, you know, who wants to spend $67 a month for you know, a modeling program, and then, you know, I, I get it. They always tell you that, hey, it's it's $67 a month. You know, that's seven dollars $800 a year, or however it comes out. And this program is free, and it does so much more if you just take the time and only focus on what you're working on or the section that you're working on. So, again, if you're here to learn about 3D modeling, which is my main focus, then focus on 3D modeling. And then keep this in the modeling tab up here. Worry about you know just a couple of these little things here. Um, the modifiers you should you know learn how to use modifiers, and we'll get into that in, a little, in the next video. Um, your uh, your properties tab and the materials tab. Everything else is kind of irrelevant, and in, in, in your mind to to learn 3D modeling just turn those things off. We don't have to worry about sculpting just yet. We don't have to worry about scripting. We don't have to worry about uh, UV texturing. Those things can come in the future. So start simple. Start by just modeling a simple project and going from there. I hope this helps you guys to get started. Um, I would say, you know, good practices, just put some objects on the screen, go back and follow some of my other videos. Um, and just follow along and you'll see that I'm only using a few of these functions. Um, most of the functions I use are really truly the Boolean tools um, and I use some of the modifiers. I use, for instance, I'll use a lot of times the curve modifier. I'll use the array modifier, the Boolean modifier, the remesh modifier. Um, once in a while I even use the mirror modifier. So just focus on the things that have to pertain to 
3D printing and 3D modeling only if that's your goal. And you will become very proficient in that. And I would bet if you spent an hour or two a night, four nights a week for the next month, you will become a very good model, modeler in Blender and you'd be very surprised at your skill level by the end of those four weeks. If this video helped you guys, please give it a thumbs up. Every little thumbs up helps my channel grow. If you like this video enough to share it with your friends, please go ahead and hit that share button and share it on social media. That helps my channel grow also. And if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing and then uh, your subscription page will get notified every time that I upload a new video. Take care guys. Practice, practice, practice and have a great day.